Hey, this is Horner, and uh, this is the beginning of the packet that says everything you need to know about rotational motion for Physics 150. I'm going to have you read through the introductory pieces here, kind of look at the examples. My job primarily is going to be just go through the problems, make sure that uh, I can show you how to do these so that hopefully they make sense. Uh, first thing we need to do is to convert 90 degrees to radians. So when you read up top, you'll see there's two ways to measure angles. One of them is using degrees, and the other one is using uh, uh, the unit circle and going through and then converting to radians. So if I want to do 90 degrees and I want to convert that to radians, I'm going to start out with my 90 degrees. And for every 360 degrees, I know I have 2 times pi radians. And that's because all the way around the circle, remember, is 2 pi. Um, if I do that, I end up with pi over 2 radians. And pi divided by 2 is going to give me about 1.57 radians. Uh, and so I'm just going to put RAD. They want us to convert the other way, go from 6 radians to degrees. So I'm going to go from 6 radians. And I'm going to go to degrees. So I do the same thing. 2 pi radians is in 360 degrees. So I end up with 344 degrees. So pretty simple to do, not a lot there. Uh, just basic uh, conversions as we go through. Uh, now we're going to convert RPM to radians per second. Uh, so they go through and do one for you, and we need to do this next one together. So we're going to start with one and a half revolutions. So there are three uh, things that we're thinking about here. A revolution is all the way around. A radian is all the way around, and we use uh, pi to help us with that. And then we have degrees. So convert one and a half revolutions to both radians and degrees. We're going to start with 1.5 revolutions, so that's 1.5 rev, and we want to go to uh, radians, so that's 2 pi radians, and every one revolution, or one turn, all the way around a circle, and so that gives us 3 pi radians. If I want to do this in degrees, I just know that 1.5 revolutions, there are 360 degrees, and every one revolution, and so when I'm done, that gives me 540 degrees. For the next part, it's going to talk a little bit about acceleration and uh, velocity. And here, uh, we know that just normal velocity is change of position over change in time, uh, which is delta x over t. Now, if we think about um, rotational motion, uh, and because angular rotational velocity is a vector, we're going to think about positive and negative. Uh, anytime you have something that is going in a counterclockwise direction, we're going to say that that's positive, and anything that's going in a clockwise direction is going to be negative. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but that's the way they do it. So counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative, and it's because if you think about uh, angle measurements, if I go this way, it's positive, and if I go down, it's negative. So up and to the left is positive, down and to the right is negative on, uh, on this side. Uh, so that should help you just a little bit. Um, formally, the direction of vectors is uh, done by the right-hand rule, so I will help you with that in the class a little bit because that's a little bit different to try to, to, uh, to teach. Uh, just using the online piece. So here we go. We've got a record spinning through the phonograph at 33 revolutions per minute. So we call that RPMs uh, clockwise. So if it's going clockwise, we know that that means that it's got to be negative. So I always underline, maybe put that next to it. They want us to find the angular velocity. So angular velocity is uh, abbreviated with this funny looking character here. This is called omega. We're going to put a line over it since it is a uh, unit uh, vector. And this is equal to the change in the angle all over the change in time. So before we know the velocity was equal to the change in position over the change in time, now we've got the angular velocity is equal to the change in the angle over that change in time. So this is equal to 33 uh, revolutions every minute. Uh, and we know that that's going to be negative, so let's start with it. Negative 33 revolutions every minute. We want to know what is this in radians per second. So to do that, I know that in one minute, there are 60 seconds. And for every one revolution, 
there is two pi radians. So now when I go through and do my math, I should end up with negative 3.46 radians per second. Remember, it's negative because we're going clockwise. The next one says find the magnitude of the Earth's angular velocity in radians per second. So the Earth makes a rotation once every 24 hours. So here our angular velocity is equal to the change in the angle over the time. We know that it goes around once, so we can say 2 pi radians. That's one time around, and that takes 24 hours. Uh, we know that there in one hour is 60 minutes, and in one minute there's 60 seconds, so we can abbreviate that with one hour is 3,600 seconds, because 60 times 60 is 3,600. And if you do your math, you should end up with 7.27 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's in radians per second. So in a similar fashion, uh, we can also do the same thing with acceleration. So We'll move this down a little bit, and this is uh, the linear acceleration, so it's just change in velocity over change in time, and that would be the uh, change in velocity, so final minus original velocity over time. If we do this for acceleration, it's going to be the angular acceleration is equal to the change in angular velocity over the change in time. Now, there's a shortcut of remembering this. I like to call this butt because it kind of looks like you're sitting on your butt. Uh, this is fishy, it's the uh, Greek uh, letter alpha, and if you think about it, if you go fishing, you sit on your butt for a long period of time. Uh, and that's how I remember the acceleration, uh, angular acceleration equation. Kind of a goofy thing to do, but it'll help you in the end. Uh, speaking of goofy, we have a frog. Uh, riding a unicycle, it says that uh, if the unicycle begins at rest and accelerates uniformly in a counterclockwise direction, counterclockwise we said was positive, to an angular velocity of 15 RPMs in a matter of 6 seconds, find the angular acceleration. So the first thing we need to do here is convert that 15 revolutions per minute into radians per second. So let's do that. One minute is... 60 seconds, and then we have 2 pi radians for every one revolution. So if I do this, I'm going to end up with about 1.57 radians every second. Now we can use our equation. Alpha is equal to the change in uh, angular velocity all over the change in time. So this is going to be 1.57 minus our original zero, and the amount of time that it took was six seconds. So here we end up with 0.26 radians per second squared. And that is an angular acceleration problem. One of the things that uh, we're going to go back to is thinking about our good friends, the equations uh, for displacement, velocity, and acceleration. And by translational, translational means in a straight line. So this one's in a straight line. And angular means that you're going in a circle. And if you notice, these are very similar. They are uh, essentially the same, except for this one's going in a straight line, this one's in a circle. This is our change in s, delta s, or we've been using delta x, change of position. Velocity is omega, which is that uh, angular velocity. A is for acceleration in a straight line, but we use alpha for the angular, and then time really doesn't change. Uh, all the equations that we use, uh, so this would be basically our, um, if I want to go from the uh, just regular x, so I'm going to put x there, you might want to do the same thing. If I want to know what my translational or my straight line distance is, I can take the radius of a circle and multiply it times the angle that I turn through. Uh, that angle is represented by that same position change, so this would be change of position over r. Uh, velocity is equal to radius times the speed, angular speed. Acceleration is equal to the radius times, you kind of get the drift here. These are all using the bridge of the radius to go from the angular over to the uh, translational. So that's probably the biggest thing. If I want to go from angular to translational, all I do is multiply by r. Uh, if I want to do the other way, I just divide by r. So let's try this and see what happens. For number seven, it says uh, a knight swings a mace. 
uh, it has a radius of one meter and it completes two revolutions. Uh, what is the translational displacement of the mace? So I know that I want to find out how far did it go. That's equal to the radius times the angle that it turned through. Uh, so this is equal to one meter. And then I want to multiply that times four pi radians because it went around twice. One time around is two pi, two pi, uh, and then uh, multiply times two would give me four pi. So now I just do my math and I find out that that's about 12.6 meters. So it went around two times. So if I had string and it followed it, if I undid the string, then it would be 12.6 meters from here to here. If I just saw with those two revolutions how far it actually traveled. Uh, next one says a compact disc player is designed to vary the disc rotational velocity so that a point being read by the laser moves at a linear velocity of 1.25 meters per second. Notice it's linear. They want to know what is the rotational velocity in revolutions per second uh, when the laser is reading information on the inner portion of a disc at a distance of only 0.03 meters. So here we're going to say the angular is equal to the velocity, uh, the translational velocity divided by the radius. Translational velocity is 1.25 meters per second. And we're going to divide it by our radius of 0.03 meters. And when we do that, we end up with 41.7. And then this is always going to be in radians per second. If I have 41.7 radians per second, and I want to go to revolutions per second, I just know that one revolution over 2 pi radians, oops, 2 pi radians, so now my radians goes away, and I'm left with 6.63 revolutions for every second. They say, what is the rotational velocity of the compact disc in the previous problem when the laser is reading the outermost portion of the disc? So now we're going to move all the way out here. So this is angular velocity is equal to linear velocity divided by the radius. So that's 1.25, but this time divided by 0.06, and we get 20.8 radians per second. We want to convert that then over to revolutions per second. So it's one revolution and every two pi radians. And when we're done, we end up with 3.32 revolutions per second, which is half, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more than half by about 0.01. Um, and that is for our uh, converting from one to the other, from linear to translational. So we can do the same thing with our common uh, equations we had for translational motion that's accelerating. We can do the same thing for the angular. So make sure you read through the parallel here uh, so that you can see how they relate. And we will go ahead and do this first problem. It says a carpenter cuts a piece of wood with a high-powered circular saw. You always want to be careful with these. Uh, the blade goes from rest to an angular acceleration of 14 radians per second squared to a maximum speed of 15,000 RPMs. So that's revolutions per uh, revolutions per minute. So this is I'm going to get rid of this S here. It makes it a little bit easier. Uh, they want to know what is the maximum speed of the saw in radians per second. So we're going to go from 15. Uh -oh. I'm going to go from, I'm going to move this back over again here. I'm going to go from 15,000 revolutions for every minute. And I want to know what is the speed of the saw in radians per second. So one minute I know is 60 seconds and then two pi radians for every one revolution. So when I'm done, I get 1,570 radians for every second. Next thing you want to know is how long does it take for the saw to reach maximum speed? So in order to do this one, I know that the final angular velocity is equal to the original angular velocity plus its acceleration, angular acceleration times time. I want to find the time, so let's just rearrange the equation. That's equal to the final minus the original angular velocity, all divided by the acceleration. So this is 1570 minus 0 divided by that angular acceleration, which they said is 14. And that gives us an answer of 112 seconds. They want to know how many complete rotations does the saw make uh, while accelerating to its maximum speed. 
Uh, so to get up to that, we want to know how many revolutions. That would be the change, and the angle is equal to the original uh, velocity, angular velocity times time, plus one half of the acceleration times the time squared. So this is going to be equal to, now we know that it started at zero, so that term goes to zero, and we're left with one half of 14, which is our acceleration, times that time we just found out, which is 112 seconds, and we've got to square that. So we end up with 87,800 radians, but we want to know revolutions, and so we know that for every one, oops, sorry, for every one revolution, we have two pi radians. And so that would be about 14,000 revolutions. For the last part, a common safety mechanism on these saws is to have a break, uh, and that is so that you don't have any trouble trying to stop this thing. Uh, so they want to know uh, if it comes to rest in 0.3 seconds, they want to know how, what, is the, uh, what angular acceleration does it require, and then they want to know how many revolutions would that be. So the first thing we need to do here is go ahead and start with uh, our equation. So our final velocity, angular velocity, is equal to our original angular velocity plus the alpha times time. So that's acceleration times time. That means our acceleration is equal to the final minus the original velocity. I put a little hook on that. There we go. That's better. Divided by time. And this is equal to 0 minus 1570 all over 0.3. So that's going to be negative 5,230 radians for every second. So the next thing they want us to do is just find out what is the angular displacement. So the angular displacement here is uh, the change in the angle is equal to our original velocity times time plus one half of the angular acceleration times time squared. So this is equal to 1570 times the time, which is 0.3 plus one half of negative 5230 times 0.3 squared. If we go through and do that, that ends up being about 236 radians. So we want to know how many revolutions is that? We know that there are two pi uh, radians in every one revolution. And so we end up with 37.5 revolutions. Uh, so it still goes around a lot of times there even though it's trying to get it to turn off. Uh, at this point, we're going to stop, and uh, we'll go on to part two next.